Today, let us take some time to study God's Word with the sermon titled, All Things Are Fulfilled According to the Bible. It is recorded that everything in the world is done and fulfilled just as God predicted and foretold in the Bible. When we take a look at the books of Daniel and Revelation, that we are well aware of, we can see the history from the time of Babylon when the prophet Daniel lived, to that of Media Persia, Greece, Rome, and even the papacy. What happened in history happened according to God's word. When God said the kingdom would be divided into ten kingdoms, it happened. Furthermore, what did God say about the heads of the leopard which represents Greece? As God said, this beast had four heads. Greece was divided into four kingdoms under four generals after the death of Alexander the Great. When we look at this history, what can we understand about all things of this world? Aren't they the evidence through which we can confirm that all things are fulfilled according to the Bible? Furthermore, according to the book of Job, what is the earth suspended over? It is written that the earth is suspended over nothing. God told us through the Bible this scientific fact long before humans discovered gravitation. Therefore, when we take a look at all these contents, we can confirm that everything in the world is happening according to the Bible. Isn't this what makes our future so bright? Our future is full of hope. We can confidently say, we have a future worth wishing for. It is because everything will be fulfilled according to the Bible. When all things are fulfilled, where will we be in the future? What does the Bible record about this? Won't we all be in the eternal kingdom of heaven? We will all live the glorious moment where we will enjoy eternal life and blessings together with God. Therefore, we must never think. Only the historical scenes recorded in the books of Daniel and Revelation were fulfilled. Nothing else will be fulfilled according to the Bible. Let us confirm that the events happening now are a fulfillment of what is written in the Bible by turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3, it is written, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to According to what? The Scriptures. In other words, it happened just as it was recorded in the Bible, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day. Again, according to what? According to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the Twelve. When we read verses 3 and 4, it states that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that He was raised according to the Scriptures. When we look at the life of Christ, He rose from the dead on the third day according to what is written in the Bible. What about His sacrifice on the cross? Christ died on the cross to make atonement for our sins. Isn't it also written in the Bible? Everything was already written and prophesied in the Bible, wasn't it? For this reason, should we ever add a single word or sentence to the Bible or subtract anything from it? We should never change even one letter. Whenever we remind ourselves of this fact, we can understand once again that everything is happening according to the Bible as I mentioned in today's sermon title. Recently, a typhoon came upon us this summer and caused a lot of damage here in Korea. Before that, it rained heavily and caused a lot of damage to the metropolitan area and the central region. Among the damages caused by heavy rain, 
Wasn't there an accident that even took people's lives in regions like Pohang? Many beautiful shorelines and high-rise buildings are located there. Because of the beautiful scenery and the ocean view, many people bought apartments there. However, whenever a typhoon passes by Korea, it always passes by that area. So the residents are anxious. This has caused many people to rethink how they feel about these areas. They built their villas in the mountains for the beautiful scenery and built ocean view properties with a plan to spend the rest of their lives there. However, seeing all these terrifying and life-threatening events such as wildfires breaking out in the mountains, typhoons being hurled onto land, people now say, of course places with beautiful sceneries are good, but the best place is a safe place. Haven't you and I come to the safest place in the world by following the guidance of the Bible from God? According to Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 5, where is the safest place in the world? God continues to proclaim to all mankind that they must quickly flee to Zion, a peaceful abode, without delay. We must always give eternal thanks and glory to God Elohim who has chosen us before the creation of the world and led us to that safe place. In the last days, climate disasters will not be the only disaster to be concerned about. God has already said that in the last days, the whole world will be judged by fire, and that in those times, we should dwell in the safest place. Let us see his word concerning this matter by turning to 2 Peter, chapter 3. Since everything that happens in the world is fulfilled according to God's guidance, we must always follow his guidance. Let's see 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 6. In chapter 3, verse 6, it is written, By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Here in this verse, we can see God's judgment in the time of Noah. God destroyed the world of that time by water and judged the wicked. In the last days, God will judge the world with fire. Such a stern will of God is recorded in the Bible. Everything in this world has been fulfilled according to the Bible. Therefore, we should understand that God would not neglect this one part from being fulfilled. How are all the records of the Bible written? God told his prophets and as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, they put together and recorded all of God's words. Therefore, everything is following what is written in the Bible. This is an accurate account of history. No human can just arbitrarily change it. So, as we look at the various phenomena that are happening around us today, we need to ask ourselves, how far along are we in this age? We should find an answer to this question. Now, climatologists and meteorologists say, human beings can no longer control the rising temperature of the Earth. We have already gone beyond the point of no return. They are using these expressions very frequently. In other words, doesn't it mean that mankind is in grave danger? Whenever there is such a danger, God sounds an alarm. Flee to Zion quickly. Do not delay. There are still many people in the world who do not know about Zion. So let people know about Zion so that they can all return to Zion swiftly. The climate disasters and wars that are taking place on this earth are of course big problems. But suffering in eternal hell forever and ever is the greatest of all disasters.
That is why God is telling mankind to quickly return to Zion, his dwelling place. Let's continue. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, the heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat but in keeping with his promise we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. Everything written in the Bible has been carried out and fulfilled exactly as it was written. There were kingdoms such as Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, and Rome. Later, the papacy emerged. Throughout world history, whether BC or AD, kingdoms were established and abolished according to God's word. God also foretold the destruction of Israel, and also prophesied the restoration of the kingdom of Israel through the parable of the fig tree. This prophecy was also fulfilled. This is not something that people in the world can conclude using common sense. Other than Israel, is there any nation that ever restored its country after 1,900 years? Such an event has never been recorded in history. However, since it was written in the Bible, God made it happen just as it was written. How was it possible? Who is leading this age and lead historical events? It is possible because God is the one who is guiding and leading all these things. This land belonged to us a thousand years ago, so please return it to us. By human standard, this is nonsense. Nevertheless, Israel, which had lost its sovereignty in AD 70, regained its sovereignty in 1948. All things were fulfilled and became a reality just as God recorded them in the Bible. That is why we must never treat any prophecy in the Bible with contempt. It will surely be fulfilled as it is. Let's move on to Zephaniah chapter 1. In Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14, it is written, The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. The cry on the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty warrior shouts his battle cry. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring such distress on all people that they will grope about like those who are blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their entrails like dung. Neither their silver nor the gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his jealousy the whole earth will be consumed, for he will make a sudden end of all who live on the earth. God did not just write these words in the Bible to frighten or scare people that there will be such a dreadful day. Didn't God give these words because these things will surely happen in real life? Let's move on to chapter 2 verse 10. Chapter 2 verse 10. This is what they will get in return for their pride, for what did they do to God's people? Insulting and mocking. This will happen to them because they insulted and mocked the people of the Lord Almighty. Let's move on to chapter 3. Chapter 3 verse 8. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day I will stand up to testify. 
I have decided to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdoms and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. The records of the Bible are not only about the independence of Israel or about the kingdom of Babylon. They are not only concerning the prophecies about the kingdoms of Media Persia, Greece, Rome, and the papacy. The Bible also records about the events that will happen to the whole world. God already recorded everything through the Bible and the prophets. God said, there will come a day when many people will be weighed down with the anxieties of life. Famine will come upon the land. Earthquakes will occur frequently in various parts of the world. Wars will break out in various places. Furthermore, as we know, there are so many countries throughout the world where two or more nations form one country. Nation will rise against nation. People will indulge in carousing and drunkenness to deliberately forget their situation. People's faith toward God will be weighed down with the anxieties of life. However, at times like this, what should the heavenly people do? God said that we must stay awake and be alert. God has already awakened us through the Bible about what the future holds for the whole world. If we are not vigilant and awake, what will happen to our faith? It cannot help but become hazy and weighed down. Will something bad really happen if I skip the Sabbath once? I have kept the Passover every year. Will something happen if I don't keep it just this year? Our faith will become numb like this. We must not become numb due to worldly matters. This earth is only a temporary dwelling place. Since the kingdom of heaven is the world where we will live forever and ever, we must remove from our daily lives everything that can hinder us from entering the kingdom of God. We must be able to cheer up, being full of endurance, and run toward the kingdom of heaven until the end. In the prophecy of Zephaniah, God said, the whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. Indeed, all things are happening in the world according to the Bible. Let's take a look at the Gospel of Luke chapter 21 verse 9. In chapter 21 verse 9, Jesus said, When you hear of wars and uprisings, Jesus used the expression, wars and uprisings. The English Bible clearly recorded that people will hear of wars and uprisings, in other words, riot, revolts, or disturbances. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines and pestilences in various places. A pestilence can be simply described as an infectious disease, that is, a pandemic. COVID-19 can also be considered a pestilence. Jesus continued that there will be fearful events and great signs from heaven. He warned us to be cautious when these phenomena occur. Verse 34. Be careful, or, if you are asleep and not careful, your hearts will be, what? Weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. Here, your heart will be weighed down, means, your faith toward God will become weak. Will something happen if I don't go to the service once? With these thoughts, our hearts will be weighed down, and our hope for the kingdom of heaven will become dim. As a result, we cannot help but drift further away from the kingdom of heaven. 
Your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life, and that day will. What will happen? That day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Does that day will close on you mean that perhaps it may or it may not come? It means that it will definitely come. This is not something written by humans, but rather found in the words of the Bible written by God. Verse 35. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth, meaning, the whole world. Jesus said that it will come on all those who live on the earth. Doesn't it mean that this will come upon every single person? This does not apply only to the Israelites and not to Koreans, but to all mankind on the face of the earth. Verse 36. Be always on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Zion family members should share with each other the words that are full of faith and the words that build others up. We should give courage and encourage others to go to the kingdom of heaven. If we keep being tied to physical things, our standard for what we regard as valuable is inevitably formed in that direction. Our value lies in the eternal kingdom of heaven. We ought to make every effort to keep our heart toward the value of the kingdom of God and to protect our faith from becoming weak and weighed down. For this reason, God said that he would tell us in advance before all these things would be fulfilled. Let's look at Mark chapter 13 verse 23. In verse 23, Jesus says, So be on your guard. What has he done? I have told you everything ahead of time. The words written in Luke chapter 21, or in the books of Zephaniah and 2 Peter, which we read earlier, are all God's words spoken to us ahead of time. Verse 18. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress unequaled from the beginning, when God created the world, until now, and never to be equaled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. Since such astonishing things are bound to come upon the face of the earth, all of us should be alert and look to God and the kingdom of heaven. We should have the correct knowledge of where we should set our goals and how we should live our daily lives and run our race faithfully. In order to do so, we must have faith in the new name, Father Christ An Sang Hong, and as well as in God the Mother, the new Jerusalem. Furthermore, we must not lose our faith in the new covenant. God said that if we remain in the new covenant, he will surely grant us the eternal inheritance, that is, the kingdom of heaven. Let us take a look at his promise by turning to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. In Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15, it is written, For this reason Christ is the mediator of a new covenant, that those who are called may receive. What will they receive? The promised eternal inheritance, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. The promised eternal inheritance will be given through the new covenant to those who are called. Therefore, our hearts must never be weighed down or turn away from the new covenant because of the worldly things. Rather, we must be alert. We should never forget just how precious the Sabbath day is, and how great the grace of the new name Christ An Sang Hong and our new Jerusalem Heavenly Mother is. We must keep awake, and be careful not to spiritually doze off. In the parable of the ten virgins, there are five virgins who were awake and five who were sleeping. 
The five foolish virgins did not even prepare oil because they were too busy dozing off. Unlike them, we need the oil of faith. We need to be careful so that our heart nor our faith will be weighed down. Our eternal heavenly home is waiting for us. On the day when we return to our eternal heavenly home, we must not be in a position where we will not be able to enter. All of us must go to heaven hand in hand with heavenly father and heavenly mother. Then, among the things that are happening according to the Bible, what did God promise will happen to us in this age? Let us turn to Revelation chapter 22 verse 1 to see how the Bible records about this. Regarding the heavenly people who believe in the new name and new Jerusalem heavenly mother, those who dwell in the truth of the new covenant, and give praise and glory to God in Zion, let us see what blessings God will bestow upon them. Chapter 22 verse 1 then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, this is all recorded in the Bible. All the words written in the Bible are to be fulfilled. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 13, didn't Jesus say, I have told you everything ahead of time? God has already told us about the disasters and his last judgment. Yet God has also made known to us about the glory that we will enjoy when we go to the kingdom of heaven. These things will surely come true and be inevitably fulfilled. Thus, I believe this is enough for us to have hope for the future. For this reason, our faith must be reborn day after day so that no one will fail to enjoy this glory God has promised us. If our heart begins to be weighed down once, twice, or even ten times, later we may face a desperate situation where we are not able to discern how valuable keeping the new covenant is or how precious having faith in God is. That is why the Bible warns us. It keeps telling us to stay awake and be alert. Let us be alert and self-controlled, keeping in mind that the world will be destroyed according to the Bible. Let us never forget that our future will be fulfilled according to the Bible. Hoping that all the heavenly family members will make every effort to unite with each other, to preach the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.